I think it's pretty clear that dogs are the best species on the entire planet. Totally beyond worthy of all the love and affection they could ever need or want. So why is it you humans are so fucking adamant about screwing us up? I get that dogs are man's best friend and we only hurt the ones we love, but my lord, you guys are really almost putting effort into this at this stage. And I thought I would do the honourable thing this time and actually outline the ways in which you are fucking things up entirely. For the dog's benefit, this is, not for yours, you dozy dickheads. Whenever we use to train our animals is called positive reinforcement, where you attribute a positive response to a learned behaviour. Simply speaking, you showed a dog that whatever you asked it to do was a good thing to do and they should want to do it because you said so. So that's pretty simple, right? So how come so many of you get this so fucking wrong? Dogs have absolutely no idea what the fuck you're saying. They have no comprehension of the English language. And why would they? Why would they think that the noises coming out of your mouth mean anything unless you've shown them something? It boggles the mind. If you tell your dog to sit and it doesn't, do you really think that this is an act of rebellion supposed to be squashed under the boot of punishment? Hell the fuck no. It means that they don't actually really understand what exactly you've asked them to do, or they're not properly motivated to do it. I mean, let's be honest, if I ask the fleshy bastard to make me a cup of tea and he doesn't do it, my immediate response is to chase him down and beat him over the head with a rolled up newspaper. Although, I will admit I did do that once and it was bloody hilarious. Dogs are social animals and they should want to be around you, so you should be fostering an atmosphere where it's a good thing to be around you and a good thing for you all to be happy and a good thing for them to be doing what makes you happy. You know, like listening to commands that you've trained them to listen to. You should never be showing them any reason to fear you or that displeasing you or not doing what you say is something they should be terrified of. Let's put this in human terms. Let's say you're working in an office and someone wants you to file a report, which is going to make you more motivated. Getting a reward, getting paid for filing that report, or getting punched in the face for not filing the report. I know which one you're all going to prefer, right? So what's the proper scenario then? How should you train a dog? Well, let's do a little example. We'll give you a couple of options and we'll see which one works the best. Let's say you're trying to get your dog to sit. You have the treat ready, their motivation. You clearly give the command, sit, and they don't do it. Do you, A, turn away from the dog for a few seconds, clearly signifying that they did not do the right action to get that treat, then turn back around and try again, or B, smack the dog on the head and tell it off for disobeying. If you chose B, then you are the exact reason why we need to implement a training and licensing system for people to be allowed to own dogs, because you are fucking wrong. In this fast-paced, high-flying world, it's easy to get swept into a career and end up selling your soul and all of your precious time on this planet to make money for the people above you. At the end of a long, horrible day grinding away in the office, who wouldn't want to come home to an adorable, cute little pupper that makes all of the horrible shit you've had to go through today just melt away? I mean, shit, you've been at work for 10 hours today, right? And then you've commuted either side. Wouldn't it be lovely to just come in and have that warm, welcoming presence waiting for you? Sure, nice for you, but what about the poor dog that's been locked up inside the house for 10 fucking hours. You see, most dogs were bred for a specific job or task at hand that uh, they don't really tend to live out in general these days and become more as pets. And not every dog is going to take to the comfortable domestic lifestyle as easily as the rest. For instance, take us collies. We were bred to be out in the field, in the elements, guarding those sheep, herding those sheep, getting them where they need to go. You really think that we're being bred to be in that high active and that highly intelligent that just settling into sitting on a fucking sofa is going to be the easiest thing in the world for us and going to make us that happy. Is it fuck? I will admit to being the exception to the rule that proves the rule because I could quite happily spend all day on this sofa, but that's just me, okay? That's just me, not every dog. See, dogs come in many different shapes and sizes, and each one of those shapes and sizes has a different energy level. So if you get something very high energy, like a collie, a spaniel, a labrador, and you cannot give it the high levels of exercise it needs each and every day, then you're going to make a very unhappy, very stressed, very pent-up dog. And unhappy dogs can get a plethora of behavior issues. I mean, you ever wonder why perhaps your dog doesn't really listen to you? Or how when you come home, they just go absolutely mental when about the place? Or maybe they chew on things or obsessively groom themselves to the point where they don't actually seem to be doing any good to themselves. 
Well, maybe it's because they're being cooped up all the time with all this energy and they've got fuck all way to dispel it and use it. Ultimately, these dogs are bored as shit and they fall into stereotypical behaviours which are a coping mechanism in some cases for the stress they're having to endure of being so desperate to get out and be mentally stimulated and just not getting it. All too often, people just get a dog because, oh look, it's cute, or huskies are so funny in memes, and oh look at that Shiba Inu dancing in the vine, let's just buy one. And they have no idea exactly what their dog's going to be like, or whether it can even fit their lifestyle. You need to be thinking about the needs of the breeds, and actually trying to find a dog that matches your lifestyle and the life that you can give it. For instance, like some toy group dogs, um, they can be a bit more you know, accommodating to a more relaxed walking schedule. They're little dogs. They don't need to be running across fields, for instance. They were more sort of bred to be handbag pets, unfortunately. So maybe that would be a bit more suitable for your busy, hectic lifestyle than, you know, the German Shepherd who's going to want to run all over the place. Ultimately, the main take home of this point is that your doggo's needs and requirements should be a far fucking higher up on your list of priorities than your own fucking vanity. In a dog's life, you are the one true pillar of strength and stability. You are the thing in their life that they take all of their cues from. You know, if you're doing okay, then they're doing okay. They're sociable animals, after all. You are the lens through which they view the world, and everything that you do, say, act, and even how you carry yourself has an impact on exactly how they perceive things. And I bet you have absolutely no fucking idea exactly what kind of effect this has on a dog, right? Now for this section, I'm going to be using some examples and some methods from an amazing man called Stuart Barnes, who Aaron met at the Dorset show a couple of times and also got this book, which is really, really fucking good, about training dogs through instincts and exactly how their behavior works. Aaron wouldn't stop going on about it, really love the book. And we're not like plugging him. We're not paid to do this, by the way, so come your tits, YouTube, before you crack me with a ban hammer. This is just a really good book for people who want to understand dogs and how to train them, for God's sake. I, I recommend this, and I am a dog. This is New Zealand uh, runs a show called The Dog and Duck Show, where he uses completely untrained collies to herd ducks. These collies have been rehomed because they are aggressive, and he uses them to herd ducks, showing that it doesn't matter if they're aggressive, their instinct is to herd. You don't need to train them to do that. He's a fucking brilliant man, I really respect him, so obviously check him out, and I'm pretty much gonna whip off one of his examples, or borrow it and paraphrase, because it really does, uh, you know, illustrate this point perfectly. Let's say that uh, you're walking down the street with your little dog Fluffy, they're a tiny little chihuahua Pomeranian mix, you're just walking down on your phone, la la la, everything's fucking hunky-dory, this is amazing, we're gonna go on a little walk. Your attention's on your phone, you're not paying attention to the walk or the dog, the dog's attention is fucking everywhere because you're not paying attention to anything, so why should the dog? It's, oh, what's over here, what's over there, it's pulling all over the lead. All the typical standard shit you see with people walking little dogs. As you're walking down the street, out comes around the corner a giant hulking man with a giant hulking Rottweiler. He's got tattoos, he's got piercings, he looks like he's gonna fucking eat you. The Rottweiler is the size of a small fucking car. You take one look at it and you start to shrivel, you look, you recoil, you're like, oh my fucking god, this dog is going to eat my dog. You start to roll your shoulders forward, your chin dips down, you enter a defensive posture. Your body language changes entirely. Your hand on the lead starts to tighten, starts to twist and pull the dog in. The dog's there just like, what the fuck is going on? Jesus Christ, mum looks terrified. What is happening to mum? Sees the dog, sees you looking at the dog and goes, right, that dog is terrifying my mum. I'm going to whip his fucking head off. I'm going to fucking get it. Dog starts getting aggressive, starts getting defensive because you are showing it exactly that it should be in total fear of this Rottweiler. Even worse, as the dog comes to pass, the Rottweiler comes in, you rip the dog off the floor, you pick your little chihuahua up, you go, It's okay, Fluffy, Mummy's got you, I won't let him hurt you, I won't let him kill you. What the fuck are you doing that for? Why are you doing this? Why on earth would that dog ever feel safe going past the Rottweiler again when you have given it such a massive signal that that is something to be feared? All it starts off with is your reaction. So what exactly should you do in this situation? Ignore it. You walk past with confidence, with your shoulders back, your head up, as if you're not even noticing the dog. You walk past absolutely A-OK -okay and fine because your little dog is taking cues from you. If you act fine, if you act focused, calm, cool and collected, that is what the dog is going to want to do because you're showing it that is the correct response. <laughs> I 
I sincerely hope that you can see how these things will be damaging to your dog and how you can be having a very negative effect on their life by exhibiting these exact kind of traits. When you get yourself a pet dog, you are taking full responsibility for its life. And that means everything. The, the way it lives, the way it acts, the way it behaves in most cases, the way it perceives the world. And if you can't accommodate that, if you don't know really what you're doing, a dog's gonna have a very hard time. Best advice, go to training classes, educate yourself about the dog, get the dog socialized, uh, get them the best possible routine for their life and their breed and what exactly their temperament is like that you can give them. Do everything you can to see if you can accommodate them and learn more about what's going to be able to give them the best quality of life. And if you can't do that or won't do that, then maybe you need to reevaluate whether you should have a dog in the first place. Thank <laughs> you.